What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Brandon's Face. It's the podcast about a playlist. My name is Jonathan Beardsley, and as always, I'm joined by the man for if he were not here, we would not have a podcast. It's the one and only Brandon May. Brandon, how you doing tonight, buddy? I'm doing great, man. I think you might just call it Jonathan's Jonathan's Face, though. No, uh, I could never do that, man. I could never do that. I wouldn't feel right. Oh, man, I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, man. Uh, before we get into everything, if this is your first time listening to us, please, if you like what you hear, be sure to like, follow, subscribe. You can follow along with our weekly playlist on Spotify. Check the show notes for that link. And you can follow us on Instagram at Brandon's Face Pod. Check out our website, brandonsface.com. You can also find us on Reddit and all major podcasting platforms. With that out of the way, let's get into this week because we have a lot to cover, my guy. We sure do. All right. First up, we got a new one from Bob Moses and Casablanca called Afterglow. You showed me Bob Moses, so it's only right you give me your thoughts first. <laughs> uh, this is a great track, man. The back half of this track is something else. It just evolves into this bassy monster. Yeah, man, I agree. This track is awesome. The low end is crisp. His vocals are smooth. And the bridge, I think uh, what you're referring to as the back half is just menacing. And it's awesome. Uh, it's a really good track. I like it. Yeah, man, I really like this. I didn't know who Casablanca was. Um, somebody told me to, I guess there's a, uh, there's, they, they played EDC. I think, uh, I think I'm going to check out that set. For sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what their contribution to this song was, but I like this track, so good shit. Yeah, man. All right, next up, we got a Nero remix of XYZ by Dead Mouse, And Nero took a great song, or a good song, and made it great that the way that they usually do. But we haven't had a Nero remix in a while that I'm aware of, so I enjoyed this one quite a bit. What are your thoughts on it? I don't think we've seen anything from Nero in a long time. Um Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's been a it's been a few years. I really liked this remix. Great, great track. I did as well. Um, we'll see what they do next. Hopefully, we get some more original music from them soon. We need another Nero album. We do. I think there's only two to date, and that is just a shame. Correct. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, we got this Gaspard and Victor remix of Something Greater by, by Parcels. What are you feeling about this one? Um, I would expect nothing else from these boys, man. The original song is great, and I think this rework is pretty cool. Um, except for it's a little repetitive, uh, lyric wise, like vocally wise. But sure. Other than that, it's it's good, man. Yeah, they should just remix the whole album. Why not? Right. <laughs> this was the only <laughs> remix of. I think uh, I think they did put out a remix album. It might have just been something greater remixed. I'll, I'll double check, but. Um, I think they did put out a remix. Oh, no, it's it's the full remix. Yeah, yeah, Day-Night Remix. Yeah, which was a yeah, great I'll, album. It was. It was really good. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, man. All right. Let's talk about this new Elton John and Britney Spears song, Hold Me Closer, <laughs> Brandon. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I am, I'm happy to see them putting out new music, but this is just the type of soulless, overproduced pop that I can't stand. What are your thoughts? It's going to be a no for me, dog. Yeah. Is it possible <laughs> to be derivative of yourself? Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like everything Elton does now just interpolates an old hit of his in some way. The man's got to make money somehow, man. I would imagine he has enough by now, but I guess not. You never know. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to this new one from Ginger Root, Over the Hill. His streak of never making a bad song or video continues. What are your thoughts on it? Um, the flute is amazing. That's a flute, right? Is that what I'm hearing? This is a great sure. song. It's sure. one of my least favorite of his, but it's still great. So, Yeah, I wouldn't say it's one of my least favorites. Maybe one of the least memorable, though. There you go. All right. Let's talk about this new Magdalena Bay song, All You Do. This, this sounds like Magdalena Bay singing over the guitar from a Biba Doobie song and the strings of a jungle song. So, yeah, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> what are your thoughts on it, man? My notes say this is good pop music, my dude. It is very good pop music. I think that deluxe edition's dropping really soon. We'll be sure to throw any other good tracks we see on there on the playlist when that happens. Yep. All right. 
we got a new single from Arctic Monkeys. We threw it on last minute because I really wanted to talk about it. The song is called There'd Be a Mirror Ball. It's off their upcoming album, The Car, due out October 21st, which is also the day Brandon's favorite artist in the world, Taylor Swift, is dropping her new album. So that should be a fun one. You know, favorite artist in the world is just is just not correct. But I really, I am a Swifty, so. Yes, yes. You know what I meant. <laughs> um, <laughs> Happy birthday, John. Thank you. Uh, yeah, man. So I, I enjoyed this single for the hypnotic lounge rock that it is. Musically, it's very similar to their last album, but it's much less conceptual from a lyrical standpoint. But I enjoyed it. How did you feel about it? You know, it's funny. Um, I, I've been listening to their last album recently. Um, it's the resort and casino one, right? Yeah. Something like that. Um, it's, yeah. it's, re- it's really good. And this song did remind me of that stylistically at least. So um, yeah, I, I liked it. We'll see. We'll see where this goes. Yeah. Uh, we will hear very soon, man. That's so exciting. I know. I love these like no bullshit rollouts. It's like, right. here's a single, here's the date. It's very soon. Enjoy. <laughs> right. Exactly. All right, let's talk about this new one from The National called Weird Goodbyes featuring Bonnie Bear. I didn't know you were a fan of either of these artists, so I'm interested in your thoughts on the song. I like The National. Um, I thought that this song was fucking beautiful. Um, I, I I just, M- Matt's voice is already incredible, but then you add Bon I- I- Iver, is that how you pronounce it? I, I don't know, I say Iver. Iver, yeah. Um, you just add in Bon Iver's local vocals, and it just kind of elevates this to another to another level, man. I kept coming back to this one. I think it's beautiful. What did you think? Yeah, it, I thought it was a little slow for my personal taste, but the song itself is okay. Memorize the bathwater is a very weird lyric to start a song. With. <laughs> Once I got past that, though, it was pretty good. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> All right, uh, we got a new one here from Surf Rock Is Dead called "Back and Forth." Not a lot to say about this track other than it's good. It's solid, alternative, indie, and fans of those genres should enjoy this. What are your thoughts on it? Uh, It's a breezy little surfy indie track. Uh, Smaller band. I'm glad I kind of discovered them. I discovered this track on their release date. And uh, you know I love this kind of shit. Beach Fossils, Real Estate, Got Babe, etc. I just can't get enough of this sound when it's done well. And I think that this is done pretty well. So i agree i agree man well done i'm excited to hear more from them yeah man me too somebody else i'm also excited to hear more from uh the front bottoms have a new track called hello world and man thank you for throwing this one on because i missed it and this song is awesome i love the songwriting on this great vocals it's really got me excited to hear their ep coming out this week i believe actually what are your thoughts on it uh, I am a big fan of the front bottoms, and I cannot wait for the album. It's I think it I think it's going to be a good one. This is a little weird. Uh, kind of my I think it, I think it's just like my least favorite. No of the man, singles so far, it's, but I really like it. Really it's great. I really liked it. It's great. It's great. It is not weird at all. It's just <laughs> weird enough. Okay, there you go. Fair. <laughs> all right. Um, I'll save all the rest of my thoughts on that one because we'll be covering their album very soon. Um, next up, we got a new one from Fiddler called FSU, short for fuck shit up. Interested <laughs> in how you're feeling about this one? They are not talking about Florida State University, which I thought it was before I clicked play. But this is actually <laughs> fucking shit up. That's everything I expect from Fiddler. Yeah, I I like Fiddler, but this track is maybe a little too party metal for me. I don't know how else to describe that. Like, I mean, they're not party metal in the Attila sense, but it just has that feel. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, we used to party to Bring Me the Horizon back in the day. So that that's what I consider party metal, at least, you know, Pray for Plagues days, uh, Count Your Blessings days. Um, yeah, I, 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 this isn't exactly what I expected from a Fiddler song, but I, I, I enjoyed it. It wasn't, it's not their best, but... You know, we'll, we'll we'll see what happens. This actually sounds more like a. I don't think there's an, there there was an album announcement with this, so this actually sounds more like a. Let's just release this single sort of thing as a standalone thing, but yeah. Oh, this song's gonna be great live too, and I feel like there's a time in my life where I would have loved this immediately. It's just the like curmudgeon in me that's like turn the music <laughs> down. <laughs> Old man screams at cloud. Exactly. Exactly. 
Speaking of some old men screaming at some clouds, <laughs> man, we got a new one from LS Dune. It's called Permanent Rebellion. And before we get into the song, I guess, LS Dunes is a post-hardcore supergroup made up of members of Circus Survive, My Chemical Romance, Thursday, and Coheed and Cam- Cambria. So sign me the fuck up for right. this, man. <laughs> uh musically this song is everything i was hoping it would be when i saw the names attached to it it's brief but it's fucking awesome while it lasts and this is not all we're getting their debut album past lives is scheduled to be released november 11th and i can't wait for that how are you feeling about this man this feels huge yeah man uh how does anthony green sound both raw and crisp at like at the same time exact moment because he's anthony green yeah man dude he's just a powerhouse and um yeah i'm i i love this song uh, i think everybody in the band uh are gonna bring their own unique perspectives to one project and that is everything you can expect from a super group and that is exactly what this is it is a super group of post-hardcore mayhem yep and yeah, this album's coming pretty soon, relatively, I'd say. And I imagine we're going to get another single or two along the way. But just as a as a start, this is incredible, man. Very, very, very excited for this. Me too. All right. We got a new one from Story of the Year called Real Life, man. Uh, you threw this one on. I, I would have missed this one as well. And I was surprised at how much I liked this but i want to know your thoughts on it first i was humming the tune like for days bro right like, it's right? so good it's so good dude after all the bands we've seen return this year i wasn't really surprised by this one like they released an album i think in 2017 so this isn't as shocking as say the new armor for sleep album but it's still crazy to see so many bands from our youth coming back now but right. I will say of all the old bands making new music, this is one of the better songs of all of those that we've heard this year. They still sound really good to me. Yeah, they still sound really good. And they're actually very good live. I, uh, I relatively recently saw them uh, at Taste of Chaos. I think that was 2016. Wow, that was six years ago. That's not recent. Um, maybe 2017, one of those. Uh, but yeah. yeah, man, they're they're really good. Uh, and this song was really good. And I'm, I'm excited. Let's go. Welcome back. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. I'm glad to be like rediscovering them now. It's it's songs like these last two that kind of inspired me to make that playlist that I sent you this weekend. What uh, what was it called? Seen it and die. You just grew out of it. Yep, that's the one. Like like you saying that the fact that they were still chugging along in 2016 and 17 when absolutely like the scene was at its absolute lowest point just shows that that's that's kind of true, man. There's always been a perseverance with this these bands and i'm glad to see them not just getting some recognition now but also making some money again so it's fucking awesome yeah and we're getting new music i super agree man yeah that's that and that's the best part the most important part is that you and me get new music exactly speaking (laughs) of we will be getting some new pierce the veil tonight i'm very excited for that first new song in six years i believe fuck man has it been that long yeah yeah that will that'll be a an interesting one to break down for a variety of reasons so i'm excited to get into that but let's move on to this next track because we got one from a group called all them witches sick band name uh this one's called tiger's pit it's just fun in in the way that a lot of blues rock today isn't like this isn't rigid at all it's really good what are your thoughts on it droning guitar a guitar solo great drumming for a mid-tempo repetitive song all characteristics of music i like yeah check 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 <laughs> uh yeah i really like the way that like guitar takes over by the end of the track I, I don't know if i'm a big fan of the vocals on this one but the music is great yeah i i'll, I'll agree with you on that all right next up we got a new one from orbit culture called vultures of north talk to me about this all right so uh this is just a fucking banger, man. The vocals, the drums, the riffs, the way it builds almost like an orchestra. I love all of this song, but I have to... Uh, they, they actually released a pretty sick music video for this one, too. I'm, I'm going to throw that in the show notes. Um, Please. It's 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 pretty cool. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's a metal music video, so I'm hyping it up way too much. But... Um, <laughs> 
Yeah, man. I just need to give this the, this band some props. Mainly the vocalist. I, I, I'm not 100% sure of his name off the top of my head because I'm just now becoming a fan of this band who's been around for a while, actually. Um, but he does all the writing, <laughs> music, and vocals. He does all of the... Pro- he does production. He does the <laughs> vocal delivery. He does as much as you can do in a band as one person he does and i just wanted to give him some props for that major props to him um my notes on this are just that swedish melodic death metal might be my favorite death metal (laughs) are you saying you're an at the gates fan yes of course (laughs) you already knew that uh yeah i was i was surprised at how much i enjoyed this track it's really good though it's really good i i really enjoyed this and hopefully there's another album coming up i've actually thrown a lot of their music onto my uh listen to next which i'll get to at some point in the next three years so of course (laughs) (laughs) well we will see yes sir all right next up we got a new one from parkway drive called darker still i got excited because when this song started there was a moment where I thought they were going to pivot to like a Maylene and Sons of Disaster type of sound halfway through this <laughs> album rollout. Oh, man. But instead, we get them trying to be Metallica. And <laughs> I don't—I honestly don't think I've enjoyed any of the singles for this so far. What are your thoughts? All right. So I, I have enjoyed all of the singles, including this one, for what they are musically. But the fact that the Parkway Drive name is attached to it, it's just so hard to fucking listen to, man. It's so hard to go from Boneyards to this. And I understand that this is a concept album and I'm I'm still relatively excited to kind of dive in and break down the entire project as a concept, but sure. I'm just so disappointed that there that there was such a large pivot, man. I am as well, but I'm equally as excited to hear the new album and hear how the concept plays out in terms of a listening experience from front to back. Hopefully it's, hopefully it's good. Uh, And I think musically it will be right They're They're, they're good at their musician at their instruments, right? They're, they're not bad Mm -hmm. musicians. I have a feeling it's going to be good music. I just don't think that it should have been the Parkway drive theme attached to it or whatever. So we will see buddy. Yeah, man. (laughs) All right. You're ready to move on to the EPs. Let's do it. All right. First up, we got a new one from this group. Aren't we amphibians? This is the read the room EP. My man, we haven't had an entry into the if this was 2007, you would have found this band on MySpace category in a while, (laughs) but they meet all of the criteria. So congrats to Aren't We Amphibians. There it is. Round round of applause. Uh, in terms of the EP itself, man, I enjoyed all of these songs. Hospital Cafe and Mother Nature were my favorites. It's a good EP. I'm interested to see what's next for them. What are your thoughts on this? This is a small band from San Diego. I just wanted to showcase them a little bit. Of course, there's some production for things sure. that they could that could be done to make them sound a little bit cleaner, but they don't need to do that. Uh, this is really good. The trumpet is a fucking fantastic touch on, a, I think, a number of the songs, maybe all of them. Um, I think it's a trumpet. I think it's a trumpet. Um, I really like this, man. man. This is this is good music, dude. Yeah, good shit. Props to them. Yes, sir. All right. Next up, we got a new one from Jonathan Casper. This is the Over Free EP. Talk to me about this. All right. So I think we reviewed uh, somebody remixed a Jonathan Casper song or maybe Jonathan Casper was like, I think actually I think he like collaborated with John Digweed or something. And I think I remember telling you I hit that follow button. Well, this is what came out of me hitting that follow button, a new EP release. And uh, yeah, I'm fucking glad that I did, man. This EP is solid. Over Free has this kind of like neat, Tycho energy to it, uh, floating synths over really chill percussion over four four kick drums. Uh, both ten and peace uh, and peace of have fucking fantastic bass lines, uh, and then ten has this kind of like Stefan Bodzin like adjacent kind of building. It's really cool stuff. Obviously not quite the crescendo that Bodzin is known for. Uh, is that a Porter Robinson sample in unit in Unify? Did did you did you catch that? I don't that? know. I, I'm not sure. Is I, it? I kept trying to figure out what it is. Go back and listen to Unify, and you tell me if that's a if that's a thing. Okay. Um, 
at 28 minutes or so, this EP is about as long, maybe longer than the Tiny Moving Parts album we're about to review. And I just thought that I would mention that. <laughs> I don't know why. I just thought it was funny. That is funny, man. Uh, differences in genre, man. <laughs> uh, I like this EP. It, it's very subtle and mellow, but there's enough progression and substance to keep me interested throughout it. I think it's really good. Good. I'm glad you liked it. Go back and listen I to Unify. Do. I'm telling you. I will. I'm I, going to do I, that right I after. Think it's I'll a let you know. I think it's a sad machine sample, and it's very subtle. But it it, it was it was driving me fucking crazy. So, as it should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely check that out after the show. Yes. All right, let's move on to the albums, buddy. You ready? Yeah. First up, we got a new one from JID called "The Forever Story." I remember a while back, someone on Twitter asked Vince Staples what his new music would sound like, and he replied by saying it would sound the same, just new. I feel like that statement describes this new JID album perfectly. <laughs> if you're a fan of The Never Story or DiCaprio 2, you will like this. It's everything we love about JID, just more of it. There's some new wrinkles to the formula. We hear new flows and a new confidence in his singing voice. But it's not experimental as much as it is growth through repetition. He never overuses the new tricks that he's learned, which I really do appreciate. And everything he's doing is in service of making the album flow the best that it can. The structure and sequencing have a lot to do with that as well. And I love the way that he structures his albums. The front is bangers and singles. The middle is more conscious and personal, while the back is more melodic and feature heavy. This album hits a lot of the same beats DiCaprio 2 did, but nothing about it feels repetitive or old. Radar plays the same role Slick Talk did on DiCaprio 2. It acts as a series of exercises to get you kind of prepared for everything you're about to hear over the course of the album. These tracks have always had multiple beat switches, tempo changes, and I feel like they push his creativity to the max. These tracks are almost never singles, but they're usually my favorites. Crack Sandwich is the rare banger with lyrical substance uh i ain't got no cheeseburger money make a sandwich maybe my favorite line on the album yes sir uh yeah so good maybe of the year we'll see um <laughs> we still get some dreamville collabs too we get earth gang and ari and we get to hear him trade some bars with some legends like little wayne and yasin bay it's it's a great album man it met most of my expectations for it and surpassed others this immediately puts him in the album of the year conversation as much as it solidifies him as one of the best in rap music today, man. It's I have this in the eight or nine range. Radar or surround sound is probably going to be my standout. Nice. How are you feeling about it, though? All right. Uh, so first off, I want to say I really like Lil Durk's verse on Brennan. Okay. Brennan. Um, I'll note that right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is actually, this is one of the podcast's most anticipated releases of the year, man. Um, and I think my expectations were pretty high. And not only because of the singles, but because of all of the features he's done this year and just how overall quality his lyricism is outside of uh, this. So from sure. the onset, Radar is just heavy. Uh, the beats, the, you know that I'm not a huge fan of beat switches, but um, I think it works really well here and on a number of the other uh, tracks it slides perfectly into dance now uh which we've already covered uh crack sandwich is an interesting flex um <laughs> the beat switch <laughs> is not my favorite though i do like that they uh they kind of incorporated the same chorus in like a different way into the new beat i really liked that uh good stuff uh the way that the talking at the back kind of leads into this jazzy ass bass line on camp punk me is really fucking cool yeah. Uh, Can't Punk Me is just Jid and Earth Gang wrapping circles around each other and everyone in the industry. Um, it's just <laughs> next level, man. Um, the insane production somehow takes a backseat to the lyricism. Uh, surround sound we've already covered, but I just want to say that that uh, Aretha Franklin sample that just kind of abruptly hits the beat is just reminiscent yeah. of uh, Santa Maria off of Daytona. And I, uh, I really, really enjoy that. Um, Incredible. <laughs> So apparently Jid can sing. Uh, he apparently hired a vocal cord, vocal cord coach before recording this album, which definitely shows. Um, yeah. He's really good, man. Uh, I love the wordplay, and it occurs to me halfway through Cody Blue 31 that I realize we haven't had masterful wordplay this clever really since Lil Wayne was at his height. 
Um, everything's really clever. Um, Brudenem and Sistanem really open him up. Uh, the tone of the album has like totally changed by this point, and that's not a bad thing like at all. It's going deeper, and it's something that I really like that he's doing, um, and he's doing it really well. The second verse on System M is just fucking powerful. I've got a quote here. Uh, quote, I'm not the only one affected by the poison in the mind and the lifestyle that shine from iced out diamonds that combine with misogynistic mindsets. Fucking incredible, wild, bro. Man. Just, just incredible. great, dude. Um, the simple, sultry first half of "Can't Make Your Can't Make You Change" with Ari is funky as hell. Ugh, man, overall, man. this album has very little fat on it, and the only things I can find that I dislike about it aren't bad. They're just not something. Uh, with, they're, they're, they're just not for me, right? Um, there's fantastic lyricism, and hearing Lil Wayne try to emulate. Jid on just in time is fucking great because it, it you can you can you can kind of hear Lil Wayne kind of trying to like get back into it and it's 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 kind of cool man it's kind of cool I'm sure that's one of it's, Jid's it's heroes funny. yeah uh, <laughs> oh it is he said he didn't even listen to the Wayne verse until the album came out he wanted no to hear it with everyone else yeah <laughs> all right <laughs> fuck yeah uh oh yeah I'll be returning this to this album a lot this year I'm sure you will um I gave it an eight um it I think my standout is surround sound because it's a banger or system M because of just the incredible lyricism like it's just it's up there with top level lyricism man I like it, man. Um, it should be noted that originally this album was going to end with a song called 2007 that I think he released about a, a week before the album came out, but it ended up getting pulled from streaming and from this track list because of an uncleared sample. So oh. if that track ever does resurface and gets added to the album, I will let you know. Hell yeah. All right. You ready to talk about Muse? <laughs> <laughs> yeah let's do it all right man muse's new album will of the people is out and i want to know brandon's thoughts about it so please brandon <laughs> tell me him. all right I, i'm i'm a fan of muse uh i like their music and i have for a long time um they released a number of really good albums um i'm gonna go back the resistance is a good one absolution the second law um these are all in my opinion gr great great albums um yeah. <laughs> uh, what happened, Muse? Uh, I, I, I really, I really wanted to like this one, um, and you could. I'm sure you could hear my my weighted apprehension when the singles were coming out, and I was like, "Well, we'll see." Um, I just can't get into this one, man. It's similar to the Panic album that we just listened to. This is trying very hard to be a rock opera that just doesn't have any real cohesive theme except for i don't know resistance against so, so, something um I, do, I don't even know what that <laughs> something is um look man i can appreciate rebellion music and music that is supposed to ruffle some feathers right i'm a big fan of rage run the jewels they did kill your masters um the entirety of like the exploiteds catalog even old anti-war songs etc cetera, etc cetera. but this ain't it because they don't have any actual they, they don't have any actual thoughts besides they and they are bad. Um, all right. So lyrics aside, I think this album has some pretty neat moments musically. Um, I like a lot of the synth elements. Uh, I like the downtuned guitars uh, combined with some synth elements on compliance. I like the breakdowns they have in a few tracks. Uh, there's some really neat uh, vocal performances in a few spots, too. Again, take the lyrics out of your mind. Just focus on voice as an instrument. Um, it seems they just they had a sonic destination and they just can't write lyrics for shit, man. And they can't structure an album. And because of that, I gave it a three out of ten. It's fine. Kill or be killed wow. or compliance are like the the best on wow. on the record, but it's 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 bad, bro. Wow. Whoa, whoa. Okay. I say I was expecting you to be like cool on it. I wasn't expecting you to like not like it at all. That's interesting. I, I didn't, man. I I you know you know what you know what bothers me, man? I really wish that they would just be up front. Like it's it's cool, bro. If you if you truly believe that there's like conspiracies out there and you want to resist those, 
throw some names in there, bro. Let, like, let, like, let's go. Let's get the people going, right? If you're just going to be a blanket resistance thing, like at least Rage Against the Machine calls out those who work forces also burn crosses. At least fucking, uh, at least the exploited. I mean, the exploited, uh, a punk band has an album called Let's Start a War. And the mm-hmm. actual song is called Let's Start a War, dot, 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 mm-hmm. said Maggie one day in, in like specifically names Margaret Thatcher, because that's what was happening in the UK at the time. And it's like, dude, if you're going to be a rebellion, if you're going to be a rebellion music, fuck yeah, man. Let's hear what you're actually rebelling against. I couldn't agree more, man. Um, I I do think that the older they get, the more they kind of slip into like that Imagine Dragons genre of rock. So I guess I judge it a little differently. Not that that's a good genre of rock to slip into. Um, but yeah, man, I, I didn't rate this album much higher than you, but I did rate it higher than you, which is okay. a big surprise to me because I thought you would have found more to like about it than me. But uh, yeah, I thought it was okay at best. It starts with Will of the People, which is my least favorite song on the album, both because of its repetitive refrain and because it just sounds like Marilyn Manson's The Beautiful People, which I said when we reviewed it as yep. a single. Uh, from there, the album goes into Compliance, which is a song with good ideas that really just fail to evolve over the course of the track. Uh, Liberation is a better Queen ripoff than most of the Panic at the Disco (laughs) album, but it's still a Queen ripoff. Uh, Won't Stand Down or Kill or Be Killed are great examples of the riff-heavy operatic style of rock they do best, in my opinion. I think both of those songs are good. Uh, Ghosts is a decent mid-album ballad. It's typical Muse. You Make Me Feel Like Halloween is great because of one reason. We all have a new song we can add to Halloween party playlists. As somebody who has DJed <laughs> multiple Halloween parties, I really appreciate this because you can only play Dragula so many times. <laughs> <laughs> I actually rescind that statement. You can play Dragula on repeat forever and I won't tell you to turn it off. Um, I, I really like the music and vocals on Verona, but I wanted more from the lyrics than just a muse transcription of Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> Uh, e- Euphoria sounds like Muse making a Killers song, which I I don't hate, but I don't like either. It's okay. And the album ends with We Are Fucking Fuck, which unfortunately is a much better song title than a song. Again, it's fine. It doesn't quite live up to the name in terms of the same way like The Undertaker's Thirst for Revenge is Unquenchable by Chiodos did for me, (laughs) but it's all right. Uh, (laughs) So yeah, there's a lot I didn't like about this album. Not a whole lot I did like. I don't think it's their best, obviously, but I don't think it's quite as bad as everyone's saying. I got it in like the four to six range. Uh, Won't Stand Down is my standout. Won't Stand Down, huh? Yeah, I'm going to go with that one. Uh, yeah, man, I, I, I think, I think I rated it a three because I just, I really wanted to like it so much more. And honest, honestly, because of how crazy the last few years have been, I kind of wanted Muse to just go off and they just didn't, man. And again, they kind of structured it as if it were this queen bohemian rhapsody fucking rock opera, which are, are, who who said that everybody needs to do this nowadays? Number one, number two, <laughs> like, dude, you already are operatic heavy rock music. You don't need to like, I don't know. I felt like they were really pushing that kind of that kind of theme, and and I don't, I didn't, I didn't like that. So just be. Just they just be need yourselves. to keep resisting, man. Just keep resisting <laughs> whatever it is that they're they're singing about resisting. Just yeah. the same way the just killers really something? need to just get out of Vegas one day, you know? <laughs> just make it out of the desert one day. You know, I hope they do. All these pop punk kids keep keep singing about hating their hometown. Just move, bro. <laughs> Would you be interested in Claudio from Coheed writing a war for Muse to sing about? Yes. There we go. See, Claudio, I'm getting you work. Let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, let's talk about this Tink album. Uh, This is her new album, Pillow Talk. I have not heard a song from her in a few years. And for some reason, I remember her as more of a rapper than a singer. So either I'm misremembering or she has evolved. 
Either way, I hit play on this one. It dropped out of curiosity, and I'm glad I did because it's the type of R&B I, I appreciate. It's not trying to do too much stylistically, and it's not trying to overwhelm you with star power features or too much production. There are some good features, though. 2 Chains and Fabulous stand out as my favorites, I think. Uh, I know you won't like a lot of this album <laughs> lyrically because the subject matter is almost all sex or cheating and it's not very clever. Trap R&B rarely is, Brandon. <laughs> but what I do hope you <laughs> like about this album are some of the things I liked about it, which are it's a very focused album, which has a lot of nods to the 90s and it's filled with some really good R&B vocal runs. But I know there's going to be some things that you don't like about this album beyond the obvious, because there's things I don't like about this album beyond the obvious, and I'm a pretty big fan of it. It runs too long. A lot of the songs sound the same, and the lyrical subject matter doesn't have a variety. Are all valid criticisms, but I think where the album shines is worth those imperfections. I honestly feel like Going Bad Through Mine is one of the best R&B runs of songs we've had on an album this year. But the listening experience from there is a bit uneven. Overall, though, man, I really like this album. And while it may not be one that I run back from start to finish every time, we'll definitely be coming back to some of my favorites from this album over the course of the year. I got this one in the seven to eight range. Uh, Throwback is my favorite. What nice. are your thoughts on this one, my man? So I actually don't really have much to say about this album, except for that it's enjoyable i did like listening to it and for the most part it kept me you know for for the most part engaged except towards the end i kept like having to like like how many re, songs are like, left like all right Marianne, brandon you 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 can finish um i guess the only critique i have of it is that it's a bit predictable it's a bit generic i don't know if that's the word um also did you want this squeaky bed beat um I, mean, I, I was gonna omit that from my review. I mean I know it's an interlude but like I couldn't even make it the full minute and a half uh Teddy boy I'm sorry two change the feature is pretty good uh some of those songs are some of these songs are very sexual man um, I did like uh yeah. I did like fabulous's verse um overall I didn't hate it uh it's not my favorite r b release of the year it's not my least favorite um I I think cater with uh two chains is my standout I gave it a five great song man I'm glad you at least enjoyed it some of it I think it's so funny that he used to go by titty boy Mr boy Mr boy <laughs> <laughs> it's it, your man. boy all right, man. I'm excited to talk about this new Tiny Moving Parts album. Are you? Hey, let's go. Let's go. They released their new self-titled album. You showed me this band, so it's customary that you do the review first. All right. So it turns out I love this band. Um, <laughs> this album is yeah. fucking great, man. It's a perfect blend of Midwest emo and pop punk. You've got that glittery guitar. You've got the power chords. The drumming is dynamic and the lyrics all they just all combine to make something that this band should be super duper proud of. Uh, this is an instant classic in the genre, in my opinion, and I think it should get the recognition it deserves. There aren't any skips. Um, I, I it's they're all just fucking great i think i'm gonna be deep diving into their discography and will more than likely enjoy all of it at 27 minutes long it is the perfect emo pop punk album length and i gave it a nine my standout is uh demons are taking over dude fuck yeah man i also love this album i've listened to it countless times and every time i find something new i love about it Songs like North Shore and Tangled Up are among the best indie punk songs we've heard this year, and this is easily in the upper echelon of rock albums we've heard this year. I was expecting to like this, but they really knocked it out of the park. The four singles are my favorite songs on this album, but this is one like you that I just run front to back every time. I also have so this good. in the eight to nine range. Tangled Up is my standout, though. Tangled Up's a good one. Yeah, great album. Love this one. And we'll definitely be following them from here. Hell yes. All right, man. Let's talk about Angel Maker's new album, Sanctum. You mentioned this one briefly last week that you wanted to show me a little more deathcore. So what did you want to show me on this one? <laughs> All right. So this album actually released in March. Um, I discovered this band for myself. Apparently they're major in the deathcore world. Um, I discovered this band a few months ago and, uh, 
listened to the album. I really liked it, and I wanted to put it on our In Case of Slow Week Break Glass playlist. And uh, we just talked about it, and I was like, fuck it. We just need to throw it on. Um, I'm sick of just kind of sitting on it. All right, so this intro track, Slaughter, had me fucking cracking up, man. Uh, This is clearly an homage to the early deathcore days, and they have no problem saying that they just make good old-fashioned deathcore. And that's exactly what this entire album is. Um, Relate to the game here, like I said, it released in March. Um, The vocals, I think, stand out as really good. Uh, The thematic lyrics on top of chugs, breakdowns, and melodic breaks throughout the album just kind of really had me in this nostalgia loop. Uh, the scene sure is not dead, and I apparently have not grown out of it yet. There isn't much else to say here, right? They're not breaking any boundaries down. They're not re-pioneering any sound, and that's not only okay, it's kind of welcome. I think this whole album was heavy. I think it was produced well. I think it fits the bill of Deathcore to a T, and uh, this shit is brutal with two zeros instead of O's, um, and I didn't, I didn't want the year to go by without making you listen to this. So I, I, I gave this album a seven. My, my standout was creator's conscience because of the lyrical content, which is, I don't know if you read the lyrics or listened or heard them, but they are very, very interesting. I heard them. I did not read them. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So for me, not being a big fan of Deathcore, I surprisingly enjoyed most of this album. I'm still not a big fan of the real guttural lows and some of the shrieking highs, but I am finding more that I do appreciate about the genre, like the awesome fucking guitar work in Creator's Conscience. What would I give in Lazarus? All three of those are great. Um, the incorporation of the plucky bass on Effulgence. Yeah, man. There's some incredible double kick throughout the album. Uh, Bloom is just an instrumental masterpiece. My favorite moment on the album, though, is the last 30 seconds of Gutless. I don't know if it's a breakdown or an outro, but I absolutely love that. Whatever the hell's going on. Um, (laughs) I don't know how often I'll return to this album, but I did enjoy it. I'll give it a six or a seven. Gutless was my standout. Good. I'm glad you liked it, man. Yeah, man. It was enjoyable. Cool. The intro was actually the thing I enjoyed the least, but I'm glad glad it served a purpose. I was just cracking up, man. It's so dumb. (laughs) They were just like, how do we make the most corny deathcore intro? Just breakdowns. It's just just (laughs) four different breakdowns, bro. Just do as many pig squeals as you can. All right, ready? Three, two, one, hit it. Like... I think it was like Thursday morning and I was starting work at like 5.30 a.m. and I hit play and I was like, oh yeah, I'm coming back to that one later. Like, not at all happening right now. not morning music, homie. Yeah. This is throw a hoodie on, get under the covers. Oh man. Exactly. Exactly. All right, man. Let's talk about this new Opio album called A Shape of Sound. You showed me Opio recently, right? Yes. What song of his did we review? Was it Dopamine? I think it was I Dopamine. Can't remember. Uh, regardless, man, uh, my favorite my favorite tracks on this album are the ones that incorporate horns or vocals, but there is solid production on almost every track here. It's hard to define, but I'd say this is what Future House with some influence from all over the spectrum. Like we get some dub and some drum and bass worked in both of which are used in a really fun and creative way. They dabble in some like abstract pop on songs like Gravitate and they kind of succeed at it. Uh, They prove they're more than capable to hold their own without features. I'm a big fan of the synths they use. They're really crisp and sharp and have a lot of texture. They remind me of Data Life in that way, especially on songs like Find Your Way, that that one especially. That also happens to be one of my favorite songs on the album. Um, But I I don't think I disliked any song on here. My my favorite song and my favorite moment are both Quiver, though, man. That drop with the horn (laughs) section at the end is fucking incredible. You knew that was going to be my standout. I had a feeling. I knew it. Uh, Yeah, I, I had a lot of fun listening to this album. And I look forward to hearing what's next from them as willing as well as diving into their past catalog. I gave this one, I think, a six or seven, and yeah, Quiver is my standout, but I enjoyed this. What are your thoughts on it? So I discovered Opio and Rufus du Soul on the very same day. Uh, I was going through, it was like 2015 or 
14 or something like that. And I was scrolling through um, music festival lineups and they happened to be on the same lineup. Rufus Dussault was headlining Northern Knights Music Festival and Opio's name was just a little tiny name there. And I was like, and it said Opio live. And I was like, the fuck is this? So I, I decided <laughs> to take a look at it. And oh my goodness, um, Opio has yet to disappoint me. I call it FDM, funk dance music. Um, it's just like that. filled to the top, man, with inventive bass lines, brass instruments interpolated perfectly within breaks and glitchy synths and sultry guitars. And they've got these kind of like dead mouse adjacent bloops. I don't know how do you describe that sound. Um, just <laughs> it's just a great record to listen to, man. There's even like some drum and bass with the endless dreams. Uh, Take Flight is a gorgeous track that like really neatly wraps the record up and ties a fucking bow on it. It's got elements of everything we've heard uh, throughout the record while inciting a wave of calm that just kind of washed over me. Um, is that a fucking French horn? I don't know, man. This record is like an <laughs> amalgam of genres and when done poorly can really sound awful as we you can tell from the Hudson Mohawk record that we just, that we just uh, reviewed. Um, sure. But here it sounds fucking great um i listened to this a few times and i have to say uh i'll be coming back to it uh uh, throughout the year and the limited amount of time we have left because this year is fucking flying bro um it is i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna start off your opio deep dive with uh a red rocks performance that they did with an orchestra oh sick yeah Uh, it's, it's, it's on youtube and i just recently watched it again and Oh boy, <laughs> it's fucking wild, man. I gave this an eight. Uh, Humphrey Dumpling was my was my standout here. Great song, yeah. great song. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely throw that video in the show notes for me. I will. Please, please watch it and then then dive into their discography. They 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 really really hit it out of the park. Oh, you know I will, man. I know you will. All right, let's move on to this last album we have this week. This is Becoming the Archetype's new album, Children of the Great Extinction. Talk to me about this metal. Oh, boy. All right, so this is your first foray into Becoming the Archetype, right? Besides the singles that we covered? Okay, Mm -hmm. I'm very curious to hear your thoughts. But they're heavy when they need to be, and they pull back every once in a while, and it fits just so fucking well, man. Even the clean vocals aren't, like, glittery or overproduced or... I don't even think they're auto-tuned like at all. Um, this is this is metalcore, and it's also death metal, and it's also mellow death, and it's also a lot of other things. Uh, yeah, I've enjoyed my time with this album. The insane guitar solo in the last colony is fucking great. This album progresses with grace through like a few different phases, and you get that heavy, uh, you get like the heaviness up to way up all the way through like halfway through the remnant which then turns into like this ethereal prog metal track about halfway through with melodic yep. guitars kind of just sweeping through time signatures only, only to end in a classic breakdown with a lead into the calling um this obviously perked my my ears up a little bit the, the this solemn fade out into synthy organs is just fucking incredible man um the piano's coming in as the guitars fade out and the calling and then into fucking blast beats is just goosebumps man just out of control you can tell they've got something up their sleeve at this point because they're effortly blending black metal blast beats metal core clean vocals all in the same five minutes um it just took me on a fucking journey man uh those melodic guitars with scales into downtuned bliss just transitions beautifully into the next track the phantom field uh the strings just kind of mark this uh another phase of this album that clearly takes from the masters of prog death opeth well at least they used to be subject for another podcast (laughs) um the pianos and strings leading into uh a haunting acoustic performance is just so cool the awakening kind of continues onto the in this opeth theme with melodic guitars over heavier riffs once the final chanting chorus of this ends we move into the hollow which clearly demonstrates their ability to keep my fucking attention uh blast beats mellow death riffs with vocal delivery that leaves almost nothing to be desired um the the guitar solo here is so matt heafy it's not even funny um backing the backing vocals towards the end are just chef's kiss man uh the ruins features ryan clark of demon hunter and may have fit better either earlier on the album or maybe as a bonus track uh this track is actually the only miss for me on this record the the curse kind of brings that energy level back up and reminds me a bit of gojira with those grooves the way the guitars and grooves with the double kick drums kind of all do their thing together all of this to end 
on the art that is the sacrament. This track brings it all together. It's an eight minute and 37 second or 36 second masterclass in genre blending. Took me on the same journey the whole album did. The violins, the grooves, the chants, the vocal variations, the ebb, the flow, just really a spectacular finish to an album that surprised me, even though I knew I was going to like this album a lot. Um, the finish from crushing tremelo picking as the melody just kind of flows and the drums progress into like the soft landing just makes you want to start this album all over again. If it wasn't for the ruins, this would be, in my opinion, very close to a perfect album. They just needed to trim a little bit of fat off of it, but I will be listening to this regularly. And I have to say, I've been a fan of Beco Becoming the Archetype since uh, their first record. Uh, and I think it was 2000 and six or 2005 actually it's called terminate damnation and um i don't know if you remember a little website called pure volume but um <laughs> that's how i found becoming the archetype and it was during uh dr macavinta's class in freshman year of high school and i was just on pure volume on the on the in the computer lab just trying just plugging my headphones in trying to find some music and uh lo and behold i came came to this band and they've always kind of had this sound and you can tell this this album is kind of always what they've been striving to do and i don't know what happened maybe it was the solid state signing because this is a solid state record um record label release rather um mm -hmm. which who's been having a good year this year with norma jean um and a couple yeah. other records um but uh but yeah man i think they really found exactly how to do what they've always wanted to do with this record i fucking loved this album bro this is such a good record man i gave it a uh, i gave it a nine my standout is the sacrament or the awakening and I, I can't really decide i'm dying to hear your thoughts though because i was obsessed this week that was a great review man well, thank um, you, sir. My thoughts are as follows, man. I thought the album was good. I really like the way they work in some theatrical elements. There's a lot of great instrumentation throughout the album, obviously, but the screaming and the clean vocals are solid. And for only a three band members, they have a really full sound and the album is paced well. They don't really repeat themselves. I didn't think any song felt out of place or ran too long, but you're kind of more the expert in that regard than i am they even give you the customary mid-album acoustic break which i not <laughs> only enjoy but kind of look forward to the older i get uh it, it's also good to see solid state still going strong like you said man i i really enjoyed this i thought it was good front to back i gave it a seven i think the calling would be my standout if i had to pick one all right neat so yeah, I didn't love it quite as much as you, but after hearing your review, I'll definitely go back and listen to it with all of that in mind. Put the headphones on, man, and just 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 even pull the lyrics up on your Spotify and just kind of just kind of go to town, man. It's also worth mentioning that this is a Christian band. I don't know if that matters, but they've they they they, they are that, or at least they used to be. This is their first release on Solid State, and the majority of their records have been released by a record label entitled, what's it called here? Like all of their records, except for this one, have been released on Capital Christian Music Group, which I thought was interesting oh. for how insane this band is. Yeah, that is interesting. Well, I'm glad that they were able to put this out and it sounds as great as it does. If you think this is something they've kind of been working towards their whole career, but I enjoyed this a lot for what it was. Nice. Fuck yeah, man. So we will be coming to you next week with something. We will let you know there's new albums from Kenny beats, the front bottoms and Megadeth coming out. We're figuring out our calendar for the month of September going forward. We'll be sure to update all of you. But please, have a nice Labor Day, man. Drink a beer. Listen to some music. What what album are you going to throw on this Labor Day, Brandon? Born in the U.S. I'm just kidding. Um. Oh, my God. You are going to throw on some Yacht Rock. I fucking know it. Actually, that doesn't sound bad. You know what? Yes, I'm going to play for Yacht Rock all weekend. <laughs> you fucking would. I'm going to put on that Mom Jeans vinyl. There you go. There you go. Oh, you yeah. got you got the vinyl? Of course I got the vinyl. You sent me it. Oh, that's right. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta oh, love friends man. with memories like that. <laughs> my grandma thinks it's my birthday like seven times a year now. 
<laughs> oh man uh well this was a lot of fun we will catch all of you guys next week peace peace